Hi, I'm Musar, and today we're going to talk about noise. Um, if you're unfamiliar, I do a daily Twitch live stream where I focus on educational stuff. And um, one of the most common things that I encounter when people give their music to me for feedback is an improper balance in the frequency spectrum of their sounds. Um, and I've come up with this analogy as a way to try and explain to people what the main difference is between the way that their tracks are mixed and the way they should be mixed. And um, if you are involved in the producer community, I'm sure at some point you've heard this idea of, of pink noise mixing, um, which I'm kind of appropriating the term uh, for now, uh, but we can go into that a little bit later. Uh, but for now, let's just hop over to the monitor, to my computer. And uh, as you see here, I have a couple of things set up here. Uh, I have three channels up here. I have a spectral analyzer on all of those channels. I know it looks like it's all the same, but if I turn that off, you can see that clearly there are different versions of the spectrum analyzer. And then I have faceplant which is a wonderful plug-in by the, the team over at Kilohertz. Um, it's a really great synth um, that I've been using for almost a year now, and uh, it's, it's just super useful for teaching and for other purposes. Um, what I have loaded up in all of these instances of phase plant, it's kind of the same setup on each channel, is I have a white noise generator at one of three positions on this slope knob. You can see right here, as I adjust this, you can see, you know, at three decibels we get pink, at six decibels we have brown, and all the way over here at zero, we get zero decibels per octave for white noise. Now, uh, white noise, pink noise, and brown noise are all three colors of noise, where noise, if you're unfamiliar, is just random signal generation. It's all of the frequencies represented at different amplitudes, different volume levels. White noise is the most common one, uh, and pink noise is the one that I wanna talk about quite a bit today. Um, and then we have brown noise just for the completion's sake. So if I have a piece of white noise and I play it, It sounds like there's only high frequencies. You can see over here, the frequency is kind of right near the top of the frequency spectrum. And um, it doesn't sound like there's any low frequencies at all. I can't really hear any low frequencies. But when I turn this off and show the spectrum analyzer, you can see we have all but an equal slope. You can see the high frequencies are up here at about minus 38. The low frequencies are down here at about minus 40. So a couple, like a decibel or two of difference, almost negligible, frankly. Um, but in general, all these frequencies are about equivalent in terms of their volume, their amplitude, going all the way up to about 40 minus 38 decibels. We can't really hear any of this though. Now, as I move over to brown noise, which we get by taking the slope knob and scaling it down to about three decibels per octave. Now, let's play this one. Ooh. Now, I can start to hear a lot more of those low frequencies. It sounds more balanced. In fact, I would argue the low frequencies and the high frequencies are as loud as each other. They have the same loudness. But when I close this, we see that there is a gently sloping downwards curve on this frequency spectrum. You can see the low end has now jumped up in volume. The high end has dipped down just a little bit in volume. And we have this nice gentle slope. Just for me, it looks comfortable. It looks nice. It reminds me kind of like a ski slope with a little bit of trees here and there. 
kind of just making the path look nice and scenic. Now, if we spread this back to white and we move back and forth, you might start to see the difference of what I'm talking about. So what we can see here is there's actually a difference between volume and loudness. As you go up in frequency, you need less energy, less volume, less amplitude, whatever word you want to use, to achieve the same perceived loudness for us as the listener as you need for a lower frequency sound. 20 hertz, putting out uh, minus 20 decibels, is actually going to sound quieter than 2,000 hertz outputting at 20 de minus 20 decibels, excuse me. Um, so what does this mean? It means when you are mixing your songs, you should be trying to go for a slope like this. Where you have your low frequencies higher in volume than your high frequencies so that there is an equal balance of loudness. It doesn't have to be exact, doesn't have to be perfectly shaped like this. But if you don't do that and instead you go for a white noise mix, all of that low end that you spent all that time working on, working on in your track is not going to be a present. It's not going to be audible. And if you master it to the point where your where your low end is actually uh, loud and present, your high end becomes piercing, becomes super sharp. It becomes painful. And this is a problem I see quite a bit, especially with people who don't have the best listening environment, which is where good metering comes into play. If you know that you want to have a slope like this, but you end up with a slope like this, we can tell that there's something going wrong. And even if we go in and we start boosting up those high, those low, excuse me, those low frequencies. Doesn't really feel as good as it could. But if we go just a little bit of a notch down right here like that. Sounds kind of like pink noise. But I would say this has more of an equal balance across all of the frequencies, which is ideal. Clearly, you don't want to do this in every single situation on every single track, but it's a good baseline. It's a place where you can reassure yourself that these sounds fit together in your mix. And if I even close this all off and we look at the frequencies, about minus 20, about well, minus 20 jumps up a little bit, but they both kind of jump up. Maybe a little bit more, but we could just adjust that. equal volume, equal loudness. And uh, the last thing, just to kind of round us off, let's look at what brown noise is. So brown noise is considered an inverse proportional slope, where the low frequencies are biased against the high frequencies. Sounds almost like a waterfall. And so this is actually a possible direction to go in for your mix down. The high end sounds a little muffled, but it's still there. So if you're trying to really get more low end out of your track, you can start to take out of your high end and you don't need to take out as much as you might need, think you need. So personally, 
I like somewhere between pink and brown. I like somewhere around here. Low end is nice and loud. High end is present, but not too present. And the track feels like it can give more, at least from the way that I hear it. Um, so I would see if you can maybe pick up a couple of samples online. You, I'm sure you could go on Google and look up samples of pink noise. There you go. There's an example of it. And then you can just use this as a, uh, a, a guiding post for how you think your track slope should look on your final spectrum analyzer. Whoops, I can't hear it because the volume's down. There you go, just like that. And for those of you who are wondering what I meant at the beginning when I was talking about pink noise mixing, um, this is a process by which you fill your track from start to finish with pink noise like this. Put it in with your track. And this is the way that I would do it. I do not personally use pink noise uh, to mix because I find that um, just kind of keeping a mental reference of it helps more. But if you're feeling stuck, what you can do is you can go in, take the volume of all of your tracks, pull them down to silence. Pull them down so that you get minus infinity decibels on your meter. Set your pink noise to be about as loud as you want your track to be, maybe a little bit quieter. Sounds good. And then while you're playing through your track, pick the, pull the volume up on every single element until it's just barely audible over the noise. There's going to be no indication of when that will happen specifically but once it does you know it'll be fine then you can move on to the next one move on to the next one work your way up and once you're done turn off the pink noise and your track should have roughly an equal loudness curve across all the frequencies from low to high this might not be exactly how you want it to sound. It might sound weird on your speaker system, on your headphones, on whatever you're listening on, but it will translate better across other systems. And then once you start comparing this to other tracks, you might start noticing where you want to rebalance or rebias the frequencies in your track against pink noise. And then you won't need it anymore because you'll have an idea in your head of how you want your track's loudness to sound. Um, but that is about it for this little video. Can't think of much else to say. So I'll hop back here. Um, if you have any questions about how to approach this concept, if you have any questions about um, whether you should or should not use pink noise mixing as a direct concept, feel free to leave a comment below. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give me a like, give me a subscribe if you want to. Um, if you dislike the video, let me know what you think could be done better. Um, I'm always open for criticism. The comments are available. Um, if you want to have more instant feedback, you can check out my Twitch stream over at twitch.tv slash musarmusic. Uh, you can catch me on Twitter. You can catch me on Patreon if you want to send me a couple of bucks to help me keep doing these videos. And yeah, that's about it. So thanks for watching. Bye.